we have yet another little it's a, it's a little complaint isn't it well it's not a big deal this one don't get too crazy about it it's gonna be fine but it is a complaint that a number of iphone users have uh, reported on i just opened up the new iphone like moments ago so uh the, I, i'm not gonna boot up TikTok 47 seconds later it's just me you're not but uh, people are saying, hey, we're getting crazy camera vibrations in, what is it, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, all the social media apps. So I was going to is it TikTok, whatever. You Third party want. apps. Camera apps. Yeah. Where you can launch into the camera. You're getting insane shakiness. And I was joking around a little bit about not booting up TikTok. This is obviously a problem. Uh, the, I think the reason I'm saying it's not a huge problem is because... I do fully assume Apple will have capabilities via software to sort that out. Sort that out. Because mm -hmm. that's looking unusable. It's like stimulated jello. <laughs> that's the name of my band. That's the name of my punk band. It's <laughs> a good uh, band name. Yeah. Stimulated jello. It's unusable at the moment. And people obviously use these applications. Now, in most of these applications, even though it's inconvenient, you can upload video clips that you shoot in the native camera app and then just upload them inside of these other apps. But it's far less convenient, obviously. Hmm. So Luke Miani broke this story. And you know how this goes, Will. You know how this goes because we've been on this. Uh, we've had this happen in the past where we would talk about whatever the major complaint was when a new iPhone comes out and it's tons of attention and views. Uh -huh. They just come flowing in like a fine wine. I, I can never remember this reference. The rivers were flowing like, what is it? Dumb and dumber. What is this reference from? Every time I try to say this reference, oh, there it is. Click on... No, never mind. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Dumb and Dumber quotes. A place okay. where the beer flows like wine, where beautiful women instinctively flock like the salmon of Capistrano. <laughs> a little place called Aspen. Aspen. A place where the beer flows like wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That is funny. That's pretty good. Anyway, so yeah, that's where the, that's what happens with the views. They flow they, they flow like wine, as beer before. And. Yeah, yeah. When you are able to identify any little problem with an iPhone launch, there's other little weird things. I just did the unboxing video and I was noticing some dynamic island weirdness, and I wasn't even surprised at this point. Maybe it's because I'm an elder statesman in this game, mm. but I fully expected that it would be slightly janky because it's new and it's software and mm -hmm. early adoption. And I know Apple tends to portray this ultimate polish, but it's anybody trying to make any of these things. Mm -hmm. And it happens. I don't think it's worth condemning the product. And I, and I think it, it is worth reporting, however. Uh, a lot of people like to hearken back to me bending a phone in half. The phones got stronger after that. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are going to probably yell at this guy. People who own some stock in Apple or they just love Apple prices will be like, screw off, they're going to fix it. And it's like, well, yeah, they're going to fix it and they're going to fix it rapidly because now people are talking about it. And they probably would have fixed it anyways, but maybe they put 10 or 20 or 100 more engineers on it mm -hmm. with the pressure associated. So whatever, like, they'll, they'll get it figured out. They'll get it sorted out, Will. Okay, good. No, I'm not too stressed. I guess in the meantime, like I said, you got to use the native camera app. Oh, yeah, there you go. Use the native camera app. You'll be all upset. So they said that they'll fix it next week. Next week. They, we got, you got a week without uh, your snaps, your Snapchats. Can you do, yeah, Can you last wait. a week? I don't know. Maybe you can't. No. Maybe you're, you, you're going to have to post stimulated jello. Which who knows? Maybe you'll. Maybe that's exactly what people need. Might be better. Maybe that's what. Maybe that's what people have been waiting for. Maybe that's a new trend. A little bit more on the iPhone 14. Uh, we have some teardowns now, and this was the big question people had: What happens to the unused SIM tray area? Seeing as how we're going eSIM only in the U.S. By the way, I can confirm here in Canada you're getting a SIM tray. Tray. 
Although when you go th through the setup process, it is prompting you for eSIM behaviors. It's saying, you sure you don't want to do this eSIM thing? Mm -hmm. It's saying, clickety clack over here. Bring your other iPhone close. Bring your other iPhone, iPhone close to this one. So we can copy over everything, including your eSIM and details. Why are you so sexual, iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I'm an, I, I got a new color. I have I'm a purple iPhone now. I'm going to return you. I'm a subtle purple iPhone waiting for your credentials. Oh, I don't like this. Where the beer flows like wine. Um, yeah, it wants the eSIM. But you still have the SIM tray in the Canadian and international version of the device. In the U.S., here's what you get in place of a SIM card tray. A hunk of plastic, by the looks of it. A little spacer. Repair website iFixit today shared an in-depth teardown of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, providing a closer look at the device's internals. Notably, the teardown includes a photo of the plastic spacer that replaced the SIM card tray on the U.S. model. All four iPhone 14 models sold in the U.S. no longer have a physical SIM card tray, and rely entirely on digital eSIMs. The teardown confirms that Apple is not using the internal space freed up by the tray's removal for any other component or added functionality and instead filled the gap with a square piece of plastic outside of the U.S. All iPhone 14 models are still equipped with a SIM card tray in this space. So I'm not surprised by this. I think people were hopeful that maybe they're using it for someone else, something else. In the future, when you're designing exclusively eSIM models, For maybe, all iPhones. yeah, maybe from an engineering point of view, you'll be able to utilize that space differently. But in the meantime, we have to sell different versions in different markets. That's going to be a difficult thing to adapt to or improve upon. And I don't know, does it make US buyers a little more pissed? Because they're just sitting there saying, you could have fit it in there. What the hell? They're sitting there saying, like, I get that you're trying to push this thing forward, but in the meantime, I wouldn't mind having a backup SIM tray just in case, even no, if I'm no, using no, eSIM. but the plastic spacer is so much cooler. Yeah. yeah. My phone has a plastic spacer and yours doesn't. Yeah. No, I mean, I think obviously people like the flexibility of having both. And there's very few arguments against the flexibility of having both other than having a, an extra opening into your phone, I guess. But beyond that, there's no, there's no major advantage except for, I guess expediting the process of major adoption by making it non-optional. So now the carriers and everybody else is feeling the pressure to figure things out quickly, mm -hmm. if that's a thing that you want to see happen. Apple's hidden redesign makes the iPhone 14 much easier to fix. This is, this is again, looking at iFix's report and teardown. And uh, what is it? It's fewer adhesives. You can get the back panel off easier. There's some clips in place. Yes. Uh, the iPhone 14's glass backing is held in place by a connector and two screws. This is nice. This is great. You know my background. I was goofing around opening these things up mm. back in the day. I had a little business doing that before I ever posted a video on YouTube. Quite a few spudgers. I was spudging, and I was also with the heat guns because of all the adhesives and the hair dryers and whatever you would be using at the time. You would have to know all the little tricks of the trade to get into an iPhone without destroying something, all the special screwdrivers. And man, I used to, I remember I had, I, I see a fond memory. No, it's just, through. it's just, and I'm not even going to remember the brand right now. And I can't even remember if we ever talked about this on the show before, but I was so into screwdrivers, precision, precision screwdrivers. I had this German brand. I can't remember what it was, but they were so much better and you would never know. You would pick it up and be like, I don't know. It looks like the other one. But when you're dealing with tiny little, oh, it was, it was Weeha right there. Weeha tools. Yeah. No, the third one over. That one. When you would have one of these, you had a, a much more confident approach because they were just better. And Quite cheap, too. Well, that's one little precision screwdriver. If you bought a whole set, it would be a little bit more. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure, I don't even know if it's the best. Is it even German? I just said that. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> it might be Japanese. I don't know. But Well, I typed German. Oh, you did? So. Well, I don't know. Type, type Weeha. Let's just get a little background. I know people are like, what are they talking? What are they hijacking with screwdriver talk? This is my background. My backstory. Yeah, made in Germany. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so you would get the kit and you'd have, we'd have multiple kits going around because when you were goofing with the low quality precision stuff, you would be stripping screws. You wouldn't be getting mm. that bite that you need. 
And so I became accustomed to hunting down the better stuff on the precision side. I never even actually purchased their stuff on the uh, larger side mm. because it was unnecessary for what I was doing. But uh, anyway, I've been opening these things for a number of years and it's been a headache. It's been a hassle. And iFixit was a tremendous resource along the way for doing some of these repairs before Apple was even doing them themselves. Uh, but it's nice to see now that they've sort of opened up the repair process to the general public, at least, I mean, I don't know if we could say they opened it up because it's, like, it's still pretty complicated. Uh -huh. And they'll send you the kit to your house, you recall? Yep. It's a huge suitcase and everything else. But maybe now that they realize, okay, this is a thing that we're going to have going forward, maybe we can think of ways to make it easier to get into. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to salvage components, in order to reuse things and not break so many things when you're opening and closing. And so anyway, this now with these clips, I don't think there's a single adhesive there, is there? Oh, this is removing the display. It's the back panel, I think, that's really gotten better. Here we go. This is the back glass. I'm going to take a peek. So you're using the, the spudgers, which is essentially like a guitar pick, but thinner. And you have the suction cup on there and you're just sort of moving around the edge. I don't know if he heated this up in advance. And that's it. I don't see an adhesive of any kind. It's just some clips around the outside. So this, I applaud this. Way to go, Apple. This is just better. It's better for everybody. People who repair them, if the per if a person themselves wants repaired, and even for, for them themselves, if they get a busted phone in there and needs a new battery or something, they're going to be able to salvage so many more components because it's not... Uh, difficult. You're not having a loss on some things that break during the disassembly. Mm -hmm. You're less likely to have that happen. All iPhone 15 models. We're going to the iPhone 15. Going to 15 now. Uh huh. Never mind. This 14 is old news. <laughs> yeah, this, we're very Ming Chi. This always happens, though. Just like I was saying about finding the problem, this always happens too. There's somebody else that wants to talk about the iPhone yeah, the 15. Yeah, the next next because there's people that want to wait and those people will will flock like the women of capistrano <laughs> like the salmon of capistrano sure, yeah. women flock like the salmon of capistrano uh -huh. the people will flock because they want to see this too they're like should i buy the 14 or what's what's going on with the 15 and then here you see all iphone 15 models will reportedly feature dynamic island display cutouts but the standard variants might not include pro motion displays until 2024 don't get me started on this will because i just made an entire video uh. on the topic of the dis the difference the gap between the pro model and the regular model and right now, I don't see a reason to buy the 14 non-pro model. And it's one of those situations where you're really wondering from a strategy perspective how they're playing this out. Did they did they know? Like, they're, this is Apple. They're smart. Like They need to know way in advance. Production numbers, things like this. This year, they seem to be okay with people buying the pro model, spending the extra money boosting the profit margins or maybe not maybe it's unexpected because i did also read that they may have to change some of their assembly um plans because maybe they did believe more people would still buy the plan like they don't know how much people want a dynamic island mm. or a 120 hertz display or are in the market for a pro model instead some of these things you figure out when you get there some of them you accurately predict others not so much like the fact that there's been reports that the iPhone mini and SE actually did better than the new iPhone 14 and the plus model. Mm. I don't know. It's a lot of numbers out there, but anyway, um, they will roll it out apparently slowly. As far as the standard model is concerned, according to this report, you get the dynamic Island first and then you don't get the 120 Hertz display until later. And I think you're going to need the 120 Hertz display to get the always on display feature. Yeah, mm -hmm. 120 hertz LTPO on standard models. Supply chain can't support it, according to Ross Young. So, and look, our old pal Gordon Kelly is in the chat. Mm -hmm. Any news on the iPhone 15 range? Surely 120 hertz cannot remain a pro exclusive, and the pill must come to standard models if Apple wants wholesale developer adoption. See, he's going after him. <laughs> anyway, next generation, apparently.
is going to see at least Dynamic Island. And, and that's the one that actually shocked me the most because Apple wouldn't normally have a distinctive software element exclusive to one model where no one else is learning this software element who's on the regular version. And again, he mentions developers develop, developing your little notifier, widget, whatever you might want around Dynamic Island. I don't even know what, what you're allowed to do at the moment, but mm. you need the big footprint to make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anyway, I told you not to get me started and you got me started. Well, I didn't say anything. That's true. I was getting started regardless. I should have said something. Well, you can put the tab in front of me at least. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You have to at least take responsibility sure, for I'll that. Sure, I'll take it. Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Take the stress out of mealtime. This is America's most popular meal kit. And if you don't know what a meal kit is, then you haven't been watching this show enough. It's your problem because we tell you about things like meal kits. Meal kits make making meals easier mm. because they're kits. Well, this is like when you order something online and, and it doesn't have everything you need to get up and running inside. Sure. Stress. Uh-huh. That's not stress-free. No. This is stress-free. HelloFresh is stress-free because it's all in there. And I've never, they never missed anything as far as uh, I've been involved. So if I get a sesame soy pork bowl or a mushroom and chive risotto or a shrimp and sun-dried tomato spaghetti, Everything I need to make those things is going to be inside the box. It's going to be the right amount. And if they say it's for four people, it's going to be for four people. And, and if they it's, say it's for two people, it's going to be for two people. Yeah. It's not something that you would probably approach otherwise, which is the best part, because you're like, risotto, I don't know what I'm doing. Risotto. But then they send it to you with the instruction, and all of a sudden, you're like, risotto. There you go. I'm a risotto guy. Just a better tone. That's a risotto. Tone. Uh, but there's many of these meals that are like this. You, you eat it and, and, and you're happy and all of a sudden you're smiling thanks mm. to HelloFresh. So uh, go give it a shot. Make your own meals. You see what goes into it. You see the ingredients and you just feel more confident doing it like that as opposed to getting takeout or something like that. So HelloFresh. Now more than ever, we're all looking for ways to save money. In fact, HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout and is even cheaper than grocery shopping. HelloFresh works with your schedule. Plans are flexible and you can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. This week, I decided to try something new. I got the vegan fried tofu with loaded garden rice. With the tofu and the rice, it was super filling. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LuLater65 and use the code LuLater65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash LuLater65 and use the code LULATER65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thank you to HelloFresh. We're also sponsored by Honey. Simply add it to Chrome. It's free so you can stop wasting time and money. It's always time and money. Mm. And you know what's the thing about that is time is money. Because oh, while well, you're searching around for coupons, you could have been, I don't know, doing some work, making some more money. Yeah. So time is already money. And we're going to save you time and money, which is like saving you money and money. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, this is dead simple. Install it on Chrome. It takes two seconds. It is free. And you'll just keep shopping on the uh, stores that you normally shop on. There's 30,000 plus stores that are over there. You could be ordering pizza, buying some shoes, booking some travel. You don't want to miss the coupons that are living there in the background. And you don't want to go and search every time. And if you have to go and search, you wouldn't search in the first place. So the way Honey operates, it's you're going to go to the cart. It's going to search automatically. It's going to go boom. You save 20 bucks, 20, 24. It's going to find the best code, apply the code, automatic coupons. And that's just how you want it to be in the future. You continue to check out uh, anything that's e easier, more streamlined, taking fewer steps from you, preemptive for a futuristic guy like you will. Uh, I think this is what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have Honey already, you could be missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor by supporting this show. You already know I saved over $50 with Brixton hats. And the process was super simple. During checkout, it was one click and that's it. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash lulater. That's joinhoney.com slash lulater. Thank you to Honey. YouTube will share ad revenue with Shorts creators. YouTube Shorts creators will be able to join YouTube's partner program. 
which they they were some revenue involved because there was they, like a creator fund. There was a fund. However, this is more like regular YouTube. The changes which go into effect early next year could help YouTube draw creators away from TikTok, where stars have complained about low creator fund payouts. This is the first time real revenue sharing is being offered for short form video on any platform at scale. Yeah, I mean, this is this had to happen if you wanted the shorts thing to continue. You had people had to create business models around it, particularly those creators that were drawing a lot of eyeballs. Now, granted, I don't think this changes the fact that what a brand or a company is willing to offer mm. percentage wise, like or or the threshold for like how many ads per you're able to show per short. Mm -hmm. do, do you see what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to watch, I don't know, four or five shorts before an ad. So now that same ad that may have been on a singular YouTube video it has to be split across five pieces of content. Right. So anyway, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, partnership, monetization, I still don't think it's going to be at the scale of longer form, but probably YouTube with their relationships with advertisers should be able to uh, provide something more competitive than what's currently going on yeah. for shorts creators. So for example, I think um, maybe in this article, it said Mr. Beast had over a billion views for shorts, mm -hmm. but only got 15K. Yeah, only. 15k I yeah mean. i hear you man yeah right there for example jimmy donaldson the youtuber best known as mr b shared earlier that he had made 15k from tiktok despite more than a billion views in the app yeah sorry not not uh shorts tiktoks T yeah tiktoks yeah well i that's pretty widely uh, published the fact that if you're a, a tiktok creator you're basically building an audience there in order to monetize elsewhere and in different mm. ways your your sponsors and whatever else because the ad revenue is not commensurate with the amount of attention. YouTube, on the other hand, gets you a little bit closer and has a, a fairly dynamic approach in terms of the ways in which you can get money, make money through through partnership, you know, fan funding and super chats and stickers and live streams and uh, long form videos, short form videos, memberships. There's a lot of different ways. I mean, even some of the new stuff plugging in merch. But I still, I just don't think the shorts thing will ever be exactly like the long form. However, some people can do some tremendous views on there and they'll now have some sort of revenue split, be able to turn it into more of a business and stick to it longer. And who knows, you might see more innovation in, in the space as a result of people being able to commit to it. And I honestly think uh, YouTube in the first place, having such an innovative approach through partnerships, mm. it played a key role in me being here and doing this. And so many people that I know this idea that, I mean, they were so early to the game as far as revenue sharing, where other social media platforms were like revenue sharing. What are you talking about? Go uh, post, post some content because you want to or whatever. And we sort of see where that led in many cases. Who does revenue sharing? Well, now everyone's getting pressure to do it in yeah. one form or another. Facebook and Instagram and I mean, all everybody now. But there was a time where that wasn't the case. Mm. Not, not officially through the platform. People were always making money on different social media platforms, but they were doing the business end of it, creating those relationships, getting sponsors and things like that. The direct way, the direct version with the rev split and something like pre-roll was... Uh, YouTube exclusive for a period of time. I mean, there are probably smaller programs and projects that were doing similar things, but at scale, it was unlike what the other social media platforms were doing. Mm. So anyway, you're still, you're still going to have a revenue split as well, the 45-55 situation. Mm. So it's good for YouTube too. It's not mm -hmm. all about creators. They, for them, they obviously see benefit. Sure. YouTube's dislike button barely works, according to a new study on recommendations. Researchers at Mozilla, they really, they're really focused. They like the research. Eh? They're focused in on Google. They're, yeah. they, they are uh, taking shots. Researchers at Mozilla say YouTube's in-app controls for tweaking suggested videos are ineffective. <sighs> shots fired. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't disagree, by the way. I think you could have all these inputs and you still feel like suggestions are a run, runaway freight train. Like it just seems confusing sometimes how things make it in there. 
if you've ever felt like it's difficult to untrain YouTube's algorithm from suggesting a certain type of video once it slips into your recommendations, you're not alone. In fact, it may be even more difficult than you think to get YouTube to accurately understand your preferences. One major issue, according to new research conducted by Mozilla, is that YouTube's in-app controls, such as the dislike button, are largely ineffective as a tool for controlling suggested content. According to the report, these buttons prevent less than half of unwanted algorithmic recommendations. Well, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, a dislike button is just a dislike. Oh, but they're also testing the effectiveness of not interested and don't recommend this channel or remove from watch history. Those are more significant. Mm. You would hope those would work better. Researchers found that these had varying degrees of effectiveness, but the overall impact was small and inadequate. Of the four controls, the most effective was don't recommend from channel which prevented 43% of unwanted recommendations, while not interested was least effective. It avoided 11% of unwanted suggestions. Well, listen, this thing is constantly evolving and learning. And sure, there's, the, there's a human input component, but that thing is freewheeling. And sometimes it thinks it knows better. It knows you better than you know you, Will. It just might. And all of a sudden you say, I'm not interested. And it's like, you sure about that? Yeah. You sure about that, Sonny? And you're it's like, like, all right, fine. I'll watch the salacious content. You're like, damn, you got me again. <laughs> you sure about that, Will? I'm already watching it. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to watch this next. Oh, and you're like, God. no, that's what I was trying to stay away from. It's a playlist. Maybe you want to watch 10 more. Oh. Uh, NVIDIA announces next-gen RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 GPUs. New GPUs and no more mining. So lots of availability. Tons of availability. Yeah. No more markups. I don't know. Somebody will figure something out. But they're still expensive. No, they're very expensive. NVIDIA officially announced RTX 40 series GPUs today. Months of rumors. RTX 4090 arrives October 12th, priced at Fifteen ninety nine. No, I'm sh I'm sure there's still going to be shortages, and there's still going to be markups. It just might not be to the the same extent as the whole mining situation. With the RTX forty eighty price starting at eight ninety nine and available in November, hmm. so that's interesting. Get the, you get the get the forty ninety for almost twice the price earlier, or you can wait for the forty eighty for almost half the price later. Both are powered by Nvidia's next gen Ada Lovelace architecture. The 4090 top end card uh, will ship with a massive 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. NVIDIA claims it's two to four times faster than RTX 3090 Ti, and it'll consume the same amount of power as the previous generation. NVIDIA recommends a power supply of at least 850 watts based on a PC with a Ryzen 5900X processor. 16,384 CUDA cores, base clock of 2.23 gigahertz, boosts up to 2.52 gigahertz. Now, um, this is the, what do they call that card? Uh, what do they call it when the manufacturer puts out their version of the card? There's a name for that, reference. That's the reference card. But I, I read another piece of news that EVGA won't be making them anymore. Oh, no? Did you hear that? No, I know. They're like, we don't even, we're not doing anything with graphics cards anymore. And I've, or I've purchased their products in the past. Yeah. And some of their versions often are the best. They've had, uh -huh. at least in the past, some that a are really very, great warranty. very good. So that was a bit of a letdown, but I'm sure you'll have the others, you know. You'll have, uh, who will you have? Give me the others right gigabyte. now. Gigabyte. You'll have your gigabytes. MSI. You'll have your MSI. Yeah. You'll have them in there. So you still have your options for your, your overclocking and such and your alternative approaches to cooling and things like this. What are you excited Ray for? What, what, what do you like here, Will? I'm... I'm about ray tracing. I like the technology mm. in games. Mm -hmm. They just make things a lot more believable. Um, this demo is really cool. Um, I can't really do the audio, but um, it's basically like a racetrack with these RC cars in like a room. Yeah. And uh, well, that light, wait a second. That no, no, intense. that last clip right there, right here, right there. Mm, dusty and lighting yeah dust and lighting together so i'm i'm guessing this is real time and it's not pre-rendered 
Um, but this is very... I don't know. It looks amazing, whatever it is. It, it looks great. Yeah. I'll play that. Show me that game, Will. Let me yeah. buy that game. Yeah. Or should I get, uh, what is it, Grand Theft Auto everybody's talking about? Oh, yeah. What about that? Are okay. we talking about that? Lately? Yeah, let's talk about oh, it. Oh, let's right talk about now. it. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, okay, so I didn't, by the way, I don't know very much about what's going on because okay. I just saw on Twitter when it happened mm. and everybody was talking about it. And then I saw the response from Rockstar and they were sad about it. <laughs> they were, <laughs> right? They weren't just sad. Well, they were pissed. Yeah. And sad. All that hard work. Yeah, sentimental. They're like, man, thanks for sticking with us. Everybody who wants to see the game the right way and not this way. And there was an actual breach. So they had to mention if anything else was compromised, like uh -huh. user data and stuff like that. And so they had to say something, but they're like, no, that stuff's fine. It's just the footage and we're not happy. So a hacker posted authentic early fo footage of the much anticipated game. Did you? Okay, I have no. I didn't watch the footage. Okay, I'm just, just going to say you that. A brief kind of. I'm just going to say that I didn't watch the footage. We're not going to show the footage. They're very upset about the footage. So a hacker hacked Rockstar databases for GTA 6 footage, and there was he released or they released around 90 videos. Wow. Um, I saw most of them. That's a lot of videos. Uh, although. I heard that these videos were made like in 2017, so like a long what? time ago. They they started working on GTA sure. 6 after, like right after GTA 5. So wild. So How 2014 so crazy. around there. Um, so kind of describing what I saw was like test footage of like the player shooting stuff, going through the city. Graphics were kind of cool. There's physics, um, how players would move, um, cops, and like how the dynamic AI would work. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can find it online if you search for it. No, I'm not going There's, to. I'm not well, going to, audience. Will. I'm not going to. Nobody's okay. going to because okay, we, out of respect for Rockstar. Yes, don't don't because do they that. are sad. Uh -huh. So what we're gonna do is wait for them to give us their own teaser, aren't we, Will? Yeah, absolutely. I was very impatient. I was very curious, but also for the news, I want to talk. No, no, you it. need to do some research. I get it. I get it, Will. And it was before Rockstar had posted their uh, response, I assume. Yeah, here's the response. Yeah, he said, uh, we recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage from the next Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services, nor any long-term effect on the development of our ongoing projects. We are extremely disappointed to have any details of our next game shared with you in this way. Our work on the next Grand Theft Auto game will continue as planned, and we remain as committed as ever to delivering an experience to you, our players, that truly exceeds at your expectations. We will update everyone again soon, and of course, we'll properly introduce you to this next game when it's ready. We want to thank everyone for their ongoing support through this situation, Rockstar Games team. Like, they sound upset, Will. Yeah, and you know what? When I was watching it, there was a bit of guilt. <gasps> you were experiencing. I felt awful. Uh, watching it and I actually immediately went to the comments and everyone was just good vibes like hey you know this is really good looking gameplay really excited to see what uh, you guys are doing next right you know um, I don't think that really really ma positive I don't know that but that it doesn't matter yeah yeah it, you know but yeah it's, know. it's weird isn't it I mean you try to think of the equivalent and it's not even close to the equivalent like it's not even a fair comparison but imagine we were working on a video this never happens but imagine if we were we were working on a video for like a year or something and then all of a sudden like cl weird clips of it started going out uh -huh. and it's not even on the same scale because it's like this is an enormous team and it kind of yeah it does kind of ruin it to a certain extent but everything leaks in 2022 it's it's like i don't know it's so hard to keep a secret and you kind of just i don't know have to you kind of have to go with it like i i look at how google treats it it's different than a game they kind of embrace it they embrace it i don't even maybe even encourage it at some point they make jokes about it hmm. and it's, it's tough 
I really don't know the protocol and you and, and you really can't predict emotionally how that goes. And obviously a game is a little bit more, it's a different type of product than a, than a phone. Mm. With a story and spoilers and I don't and know. Test footage. Betas. Yeah, it's really weird comparatively. But I guess, you, I don't know, they're both creative processes to an extent. Um, when does this game come out, roughly? Is there any indication at this point? No. Just zero indication? No, yeah, nothing. Nothing. No So they've been really quiet about it. It's probably why they, someone was really enticed to, to hack them. Well, yeah, I guess so. And uh, also Diablo 4 got hacked with gameplay as well. Recently, like around the same day. Same guy? I don't know. Same group, maybe. So but are, are it's you, a shame. Are you are, we, are you making accusations? Because we're getting hacked next. Do you understand? Oh god, <laughs> who later gets hacked? <laughs> trust me, it's not worth it. <laughs> the test footage of us. <laughs> trust me, trust me, it's not worth it. And me doing ads. Oh, um, right. <laughs> oh god. The raw recordings. Yeah. The retakes. Uh -huh. uh, like three hours <laughs> what happened you just you skipped over a story is that you don't want to do that one? Oh no let's do this one beyond meat boss arrested after allegedly biting man's nose in parking garage so you like this one because he's got the beyond meat but then he's, <laughs> he's chomp, chomping on human flesh yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. i saw this story going around a police officer arrived at the scene he found the two men with bloody faces why you gotta go for the biting of the nose and they you tore off flesh i know that's gotta be I don't That's know. Rude. Was he being held down? The chief operating officer of popular vegan food company Beyond Meat was arrested on Saturday in Fayetteville, Arkansas after an incident in a parking garage following a university football game. Ugh, people get too fired up over this stuff. Bit rowdy. Doug Ramsey, who has worked for the company since December 2021, it says on his website, is now facing charges of a ter terroristic threatening and third degree battery, according to news outlet Ken KNWA. Do you want to keep scrolling here? There you go. There. So this is him. Beyond Meat COO arrested. Wow, he looks angry. It, he looks like he's going to bite my nose off. Mm -hmm. He is not happy about what has transpired in the mugshot. Although they have a nice gradient in the mugshot, though. It's a nice background oh, gradient. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be like a white wall or something, but no. Yeah. We have some substance there. Um, Ramsey was driving out of Razorback Stadium near gate 15. A Subaru inched his way in front and made contact with Ramsey's vehicle. Ramsey allegedly got out of the vehicle and punched through the back windshield of the Subaru. Jeez. The man got out of the Subaru and he told police that Ramsey then started punching him. The report also states Ramsey bit the owner's nose, ripping the flesh on the tip of the nose. Goodness gracious, this escalated. Police officer arrived. He found two men with bloody faces. Rams was arrested just before 10.30 p.m., taken to Washington County Jail. Well, people love this story because of the Beyond Meat aspect, obviously. <laughs> like, there's all kinds of memes here. Like, he wanted the, he wanted meat so bad, he yeah. ate a human nose. or he was holding it. Or he was so he was anymore. so aggravated because he hasn't had a burger, a real burger. And so, like, there's so many memes in here. <laughs> His face. It's just so mugshot. But what are you gonna do in a mugshot? Well, you're in a you're you're it's it's like at this point it's midnight because he got arrested at 10 30 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's at least midnight. Yeah, tired. And he he's disappointed. Wait a second though, he doesn't look bloody at all. So probably wiped himself up, you know? I just there's no evidence of him getting hit. Like I don't know. Okay. Maybe a couple stains here. I don't know why I would notice that. Is it has he been arrested before? Is this mug shot? Is that his corporate shot for COO? Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> I was wondering about the gradient, but there's no way because he's so angry. But police said they both have bloody faces, and this is I guess he I guess the other guy was probably producing more of the blood. Maybe he had the other guy's blood on sure. his face, especially sure. if he bit his nose. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting there. Anyway, yeah, rough. Tough yeah, story. Tough spot. All right, last one. Adnan, Syed, and Serial. What? I mean, I know the podcast, but did something happen? Yeah, he's free now. Whoa. Yeah. 
he's free because he did his time or he's free because of some evidence? Uh, not evidence, but the, apparently the judge overturned oh, the conviction. Oh, an appeal. Yeah. Wow. That was such he a... He was free last night. Such a hit. Whoa. He's older now. <laughs> it's been 20 years. In prison? Yeah. 20 years in prison and... Well, the, over 20 years. And the appeal works 20 years later? That's so wild. Yeah. In 2000, Adnan Syed, a high school senior... But for those of you that don't know, this was like a hit podcast. At what year was that? So he was convicted in 2000. Yes. And um, the serial podcast um, was 2014. 2014, almost 10 years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a time machine that you say that to me. You say something like that to me. I remember it vividly. Like, I was actually listening every episode. It was mm -hmm. so intriguing. I mean, it launched, like, the true crime. It launched, like, yeah. It was a big... Documentary-style podcast. Played a style big thing. role in that. So, anyway, in 2014, this hit podcast, and it's essentially like a, a reinvestigation of the case from 2000. Mm -hmm. with in, interviews and 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 all the rest of it and it it took over the podcast world so this is the character we're talking about the human we're talking about yeah so he was convicted uh, in 2000 mm -hmm. of strangling and killing his ex-girlfriend the case in which the prosecutor painted Syed as a violent and jealous ex-lover who brutally killed a bright and talented young woman made national headlines on Monday a Maryland judge overturned his conviction and set a deadline for a new trial for nearly 25 years, Syed has maintained his innocence. His case won a massive boost from an unlikely source of podcast. That makes me wonder if the podcast had never happened, if he would be free right now. If there would be enough attention on the case. Yeah, who's to really I mean, know? you don't know, but it's just it's it's obviously not supposed to mm. influence anything, but it's not often that you have a case with that much going on outside of it. Mm -hmm. More than a decade after Syed was sent to prison, Rabia Chaudhry, a Baltimore-based lawyer and family friend of the Syeds, emailed a journalist named Sarah Koenig and asked her to reinvestigate Lee's murder. That email helped launch the first season of the podcast Serial. The show premiered in autumn 2014, and each episode tied, tried to piece together a timeline of what happened the night Lee was killed. What a man. What a throwback for me. Yeah, so... Um, she actually released an, like another episode, mm -hmm. like recently, uh, I think this morning and there might be some sort of like follow, follow up with Adnan. I, I guess know. it makes sense. Free now. Things have changed. It makes sense because I don't know about you, but I really wasn't listening in the follow up seasons. I think I attempted season two a little bit, but. There was something about finding the format that was yes. the most exciting aspect. And it was so pure in a way. It was like, what is happening in this? What are we? Am I listening to a podcast or is this a story time? What's like, yeah? It, this is it all was so real. compelling. These are real interviews, and then it's weird as your mind learned the format as it was gaining in popularity. There wasn't as much learning to do after, so it depends on what you were in it for. If it was, and I'm not saying that. It's never one thing exclusively, but the story was compelling, but there was so much to learn about the format that nobody could resist. Mm -hmm. And then I think for me, after I had learned the format... You're like, yeah, I'm good. I don't know. I guess that was the intriguing part to me. That was, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but I think that was the most intriguing part for me. Sure. That you could take a real-life event and create a podcast series around it that wasn't just a couple guys talking. But instead, it was like heavily formatted and, well, serialized. Serial. Yeah. There you go. Oh, is that the show? Well, I mean, oh. just to kind of wrap. Oh, it you up have here, one more thing. You. I mean, you there's one a, more thing to say. There's a reason why it was overturned. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's because there's new evidence. Oh, that, there is uh, evidence. That's what I asked. Yeah, there's two suspects that weren't um, on the. What the uh, the de known the podium to, known or? to detectives at the time, two potential suspects who were known to detectives at the time, they were failed to uh, 
the investigators failed to investigate them. Syed's lawyers also questioned the reliability of witness statements and cell phone evidence originally used to convict him. A judge agreed and overturned Syed's conviction, but it does not mean he's been cleared of Lee's murder. Prosecutors now have to decide whether they will retry Adnan Syed or reopen Hey Min Lee's case and look for new suspects. It's so crazy. So it's apparently there's like 30 days. Later. There's like a limit. So, so many years we'll later. get updated here. Try to investigate this thing. Do a fresh investigation. And I guess it happens all the time, but... It's, it's just heavy for the families involved. Well, there's that, but there's also just the nature of evidence over time. Yeah. Right? And technology. There's probably plenty of things that, that are saved and preserved, but then there's testimony and like witness memories and stuff. Yeah. Try to ask me something happened 25 years ago. Yeah. 22 years ago. Wait, what? It said that the case was in 2000, but then it said for 25 years he maintained his innocence or they say nearly okay well 22 i guess anyway. yeah well good luck to both Over families 22. um you know hopefully they get peace in uh whatever they're looking for all right wow all right. just want to end it on a wow will uh, coming in with the sweet note will just i didn't know if i was supposed to talk after that the way you went for it there. Oh, well, you could have. Well, I just saw you pre not, preparing you know, your statement, and I saw you, you had the music ready to go. I saw you preparing your statement, and you wanted to time it with the music. And I was like, Yeah, I, I like, wanted to end it uh, on a good note, hopefully. Like, I just wanted to get out your way there, man. You were all fired right up. So, yeah. anyway, thank you very much to everybody who uh, joined <laughs> us here today. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one later.